In this video, I want to talk about an additional rule for probability or additional formula for probability called conditional probability. So what exactly is conditional probability? Well, first off, we use this notation here. The probability, and then you see we have one event, F, and then we have this vertical line here, and then we have another uh, event, E. Okay, this is read as I want to find the probability of event F, so this vertical line here means given that event E. Okay, so it's the probability that event F occurs given that event E occurs. So we're going in this section here, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to ask you to find the probability of some event, but I'm going to say, okay, given or assume that this probability E has occurred first. Okay, so let me set this up with an example so you can see um, how, what exactly I'm talking about with this. All right, so suppose that a single six-sided die is rolled. Okay, what is the probability that the die comes up with a four? Well, obviously we know the sample space for a six-sided die is a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So the probability that we just come up with a four is just one out of six. Okay, so now imagine instead you pick up a second die or you're gonna roll this die a second time. So as soon as you roll the die, okay, I cover up your result, okay? And you're told, like I look at it, you're told the outcome will be an even number. So you're given the outcome or role here is an even number. Okay, so you're given that extra piece of information. So if you look back here, you're given now this, this other event here. Here I'm told you that you rolled an even number. Okay, so now with the second roll, all right, so what is the probability that the die comes up a four on the second roll? Well, now that you've, you've rolled an even number, the sample space has changed, okay? Okay, because even only, or even numbers. Okay, so now what is the probability of roll of four? Well, there's only three, th three possible outcomes Okay, and I'm interested in the probability that you get a four. So if it's one of the three outcomes, the probability is now one third. So notice how the probability changed when you're given that extra piece of informa information. Okay, so there's a, a formula we're gonna have to um, follow with this, and it just goes like this, okay? If E and F are any two events, then the probability of event F, given that event E occurs, okay, is equal to, you can do it two ways. It's the probability that both E and F occur divided by the probability of just event E, or it's the number of ways events E and F occur divided by uh, the number of event, number of ways E can occur, okay? So the top is always the probability or number of ways of E and F, and the denominator, the bottom, is always the probability of E or the number of, of ways E can happen. All right, so let's go back and let's rework this example here. Okay, so you rolled an even number. So what is the probability the die comes up a four? Okay, with this formula here, and I'll show you that this works. Okay, so suppose you roll a die. If you roll an even number, so the outcome is an even number, okay, what is the probability you roll a four? So it's the probability you roll a four, so this is my event F, given, and this is my event E, that you roll an even number. Okay, so just using the formula here, right, it's the probability of E and F, that goes in the numerator. So what's the probability you roll a die and it's an even number, all right, and you rolled a four? Well. The only way that can happen is that you roll a four on an even side on a on a six sided die, excuse me. So that probability is one six. And then the denominator is the probability of E. So what's the probability you roll an even number on a six sided die? Well that's just three out of six. So you have a fraction divided by a fraction. How does this get to one third? So to evaluate this you can use the keep change flip method. So you keep the top fraction as one sixth. You change the division to multiplication and you flip the bottom fraction. So multiplying this fraction one times six is six. 
6 times 3 is 18. That simplifies to 1 third. So this formula works. It absolutely works. Okay, let me uh, follow this up and show you how um, a very common way to use conditional probability, and it's it is going to be um, computing probabilities from a table. Okay. All right, so here's the example I have. So this is the actual passenger data on the ill-fated Titanic voyage. And so what I have here is I have data if on the number of people who survived and the number of people who died, and then I have it broken down by male, female, and child. So just looking through, for males, 338 survived, uh, 1,352 died, and summing down, there were 1,690 males on the Titanic. Females, there were 316 females who survived, 109 uh, females who died, 425 total females on the Titanic. For children, all right, there were 57 children who survived. Unfortunately, uh, there were 52 children who died for a total of 109 children. You can even sum across the number of passengers who survived are 711. The number of passengers who died are 1,513. And this right here, the total number of passengers in the Titanic were 2,224. Okay, so we just got some raw passenger data here. Okay, so if a passenger is selected at random, okay, so imagine you have the um, passenger data, okay, or you have everybody's name in a hat, if you want to think about it that way. If you just select a passenger at random, what's the probability they survived? Okay, so this is no conditional probability here. So this is just what's the probability they survived. So this is the number of people who survived divided by the number of total passengers. That's it. This is a real simple one. So looking back, how many people survived the Titanic? 711. How many total passengers are um, 22, 24? So this is just 711 divided by 2224. And that will simplify just as a fraction. I'll round it to rough to two decimal places is 0.32. So another another way of, of saying this actually is basically, you know, 32% of passengers died, so or survived, excuse me. 32% of passengers survived. So what's the probability you select a passenger at random and they survive? It's 0.32. Okay, now it gets a little bit different. Now, the next question says, if a child is selected, so you're given this information. Okay, so if you're given a piece of information, like if a child is selected, so you're telling you a child is selected. Okay, so now you're going to need to use the conditional probability. All right, what is the probability they survived? So now I want to compute the probability they survived given that they were a child. Okay, so this is my F, my event F, and this is my event E here. Okay, so it's just the number now of, of passengers that were both a child and survived divided by the number of, of passengers that were a child. Okay, just straight up using that formula. So looking back, there were 57 children who survived, um, and there were 109 total children. So this is just 57 divided by 109. And to two decimal places, this is roughly 0 0.52. OK, so now let's do the next. Let's see what the next two questions are. So if a woman is selected now, OK, so again, here you're given. You're given this. So it's the probability they survived. So what's probably they survived given that they were a woman? Well, again, this is just the number of passengers that were a woman and survived divided by the number of women on the Titanic. Well, if you look back, in your notes on this, this is just 316 women survived. There were 425 women on the Titanic. To two decimal places, that's 0 0.74. OK. 
Okay, so 74% of women on the Titanic survived. All right, now the last question here. If a man is selected, so you're given here that a man is selected, okay, what is the probability they survived? So the probability they survived, given that they were a man, well, that's just the number of people who were a man and survived divided by the number of men on the Titanic. Well, there were only 338 men who survived the Titanic. Out of the 1,690 males on the Titanic, so that's only 0 0.20. So only 20% of the men who were on the Titanic survived. All right, so I hope this, um, I hope this quick video on conditional probability uh, was helpful, and I hope you found the two examples interesting.